My message this morning is, should I hate? That'll make you ponder just a little bit whether we should hate or not. Uh, hate's a pretty strong word. I don't know about you, but my kids used to hate everything. Uh, I, hate, uh, I hate this. Whatever it was we was trying to feed them, and they, they hated it. And they hated black and white movies. I hate black and white, <laughs> you know. Uh, they liked Andy Griffith and Beverly Hillbillies, but they didn't like any of the old black and white movies for some reason. So I, I, uh, I'm i glad that they're getting up and out so I can watch my black and white movies again because there were some good ones back there in those days that, that Turner didn't colorize. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, hate's a strong word. Love's a strong word. It's a very strong word. If you think about it from God's point of view and how he sent his son to die for us on the cross, amen? And we think about that kind of love, that's a strong love. But you can take either word, and you know, like my kids did, and you make it something different. Uh, you make it a different kind of hate. It's a, it's a, I just, I don't like this, is what you're really saying. You don't really hate it, you just don't like it. And a lot of times we say love for things that we just like. I love my dog, I love my baby, I love my biscuits dipped in gravy. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and all three of those, praise God. I, I'm in with that. Thank you, Lord. But we want to look at hate today. So the question, should I hate? I'd like you to turn over to Jude. Jude's the last epistle before Revelation. So if you need to find out where that's at and you don't know, and uh, it's just one chapter, so you don't even have to say Jude 1 because that's all there is. So it's just Jude verse 20 is where we're going to start at. And then we'll pray. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Father, I just thank you today for your word, and I just ask that I might be able to bring it forth in a way that people can hear and listen and receive. And I just thank you for that. We know it's anointed, so we just ask that you anoint me as well. And we thank you for your message today in the name of Jesus. Amen. We see here that we are told in verse number 23 that we should hate, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now, let me say that this word hate here is not a I just don't like something word. This is the hate word. This is a hatred that is, uh, it's a hatred that could turn violent. It is uh, not mere dislike. But it is a radical, violent aversion to garments spotted by the flesh. It's the word mycio. And, and when it comes to pronouncing Greek words, you just make it up. Hallelujah. How many know that? I don't know. I don't know how it's pronounced. Is it mizio? Is it mysio? I don't know. But uh, you just make it up. Hallelujah. And then you just go on, act like you just knew it the whole time. So if I have any more Greek words for you, thanks to Brother Renner, by the way, who uh, I read out of his devotional last week. He kind of set me on this course here. But we're supposed to hate sin. We are supposed to hate it. We are supposed to have a strong aversion to it. We, it's not a mere dislike, oh, I just, oh, I don't like it when people do that, because it's almost like there's a but at the end of it. I don't like it when people do that, but, you know, there are people, people are going to do that. No, we're supposed to hate sin. And it says here that if we're going to get some people saved, we got to use different tactics. Some people we use compassion, like what Lita was talking about, and we show love to people, and we minister love to them, and we try to, we try to love them into the right place that they need to be. Other people, you just have to scare the hell out of them. Amen? I mean, really, they've got to understand the reality of eternity without God because that's hell, folks. 
an eternity without God, without access to God, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's not some place that any of us want to go. Amen? Okay, I thought, I thought you needed to say that because I didn't want you to be left out on that now. Hallelujah. None of us want to go there. And I don't think any of us want to see other people go there. Even though at some time in our life, we have probably told somebody to go there. Amen? And we probably also have said GD a few times, and we've taken God's name in vain. But not only that, we were taking his place as the judge of all heaven and earth. God damn you. That's not a good thing. I mean, just if we really think about what we have said. Now, I never was a big GD guy. I used worse words. You know, that was a, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't raised to say that one, but I heard a few other choice ones out there. And every once in a great, great, great while, something will slip, not the worst, worst ones. My dad still says a few things when I'm around him, and every once in a while that you know, sticks in your, your brain for a little bit, you know. <laughs> my, dad, my dad could cuss. He was like that guy on Christmas Story when he was working on the furnace. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, and my dad could do that. To, what did the kids say? Those words are still floating around up in the atmosphere somewhere. Hallelujah. This word hate here is the same word that we see in Revelation chapter 2, verse number 6. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And it also says it in uh, 2.15, I think it is. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Jesus did not like, he absolutely was disgusted by the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Now, what was that doctrine? I didn't try to dig into it too deep just uh, looked at the margin of my Bible, and it said that they taught, basically, they led people with their doctrine into idolatry and immorality somehow or another. But I didn't do a long study on it. That's something that you guys can do. Uh, But Jesus hated it. Now, it's hard for me to believe Jesus hates anything. You know what I mean? He's the God of love. Oh, Jesus, yeah, oh, he's so sweet. I always like those movies with Jesus in them, and he's always effeminate. And I mean, you know what I'm talking about. They got Jesus movies, and half the time, it's not anything like in my brain I thought he would be like. Uh, I think he was a strong person. You can't stand up to a whole body of, uh, of Pharisees and people like that and, and just speak the truth and not back down. Amen? Now, he wasn't as wild as John the Baptist because his time had not come yet, and he knew that. So sometimes he kind of skirted out of, the, out of the middle of the crowd and got away from the mobs and the people trying to kill him and all that kind of stuff because it wasn't his time yet. When his time came, he went. Amen? But he did that out of love. He didn't do it out of hate. It wasn't because he hated people that he did that. He made that choice because of love, because he loved us, he loved mankind, and he loved his Father and did the Father's will. You and I should do things out of love, not out of hate. Amen? But it's out of that motivation that we hate sin. Because when we hate sin, in our own lives especially, and even around our friends and those things, we help get them on the right course just like we do ourselves. Because you and I are prone to sin. I mean, it's just part of what we can call human nature now, but if we think about Adam and Eve, when they first sinned, they opened up the gate for all of us to do so, and it's not a good place for us to go. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus hated these Nicolaitans, their teachings. He didn't like that at all. He commends a couple of the churches, or at least one of them, for for not liking it. We should have a very strong aversion to sin. Uh, it, it's supposed to be repugnant and disgusting to us. But how many of us are actually attracted to it? How many of us actually hate sin? You see, if we don't deal with the attraction to, to it, then we open ourselves to the action of it. If you don't deal with it in your thought life and in your thinking, then you won't deal with it in your life. If you can't cast those thoughts down and exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, you'll never be able to control the flesh because 
the mind wants to side with the flesh when it should be siding with the spirit. Amen? Let me know what I'm talking about. We should have no stomach for sin. Unfortunately, we tend to look at it in a bad way. You know, Jude 23 says, But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now, in the Old Testament, if your garment was spotted with bodily fluid or anything, you couldn't go into the presence of God. If you was a priest, especially going into the, uh, into the presence of God that way. But actually, if you had something going on like that, you had to go outside to camp. If a woman was having her uh, monthly cycle outside the camp, you know, you, there, was, there was a lot of stuff. And when he uses this imagery here of our sp- garments being spotted by the flesh, we know he's talking more about the sin aspect than he is talking about, you know, bodily fluids. But think about the effect that it had in the Old Testament. God so disliked what all that was out of the camp. When Adam and Eve sinned, what happened to them? Out of the presence of God, out of the garden. Amen? That's how much we ought to hate sin. I don't want to go outside the camp. Amen? Amen? Now, some of us, sometimes we live half out the camp and half in the camp. You know, we go in and out of the camp as we choose, and uh, these are things that we need to deal with. Now, the word here, garden, garment, is the word chiton, and it means a person's undergarment. You see, the outer garment could be clean, but the one under it could be filthy. Right now, some of you might have on dirty underwear. I don't know. And to be honest, I don't want to know. Oh, yeah. And the truth is, I don't know about you. I know all these guys in here have done this, but, oh, that's still good. I can wear that again. Y'all have given yourself the smell test, haven't you? And say, oh, oh, that still smells okay. I can wear that. I can wear that another time. Hallelujah. That's right. A smelfy. Hallelujah. And I know almost all of us have probably done that, so we might not admit it, but we've done it. Amen? If it passed the smell test, it's okay. Well, how many know that sin is is not the sweet-smelling Savior to God? Amen? It stinks. If you don't deal with it, it stinks. You can cover it up. How many know, isn't that what we try to do? What did Adam and Eve do when they sinned? They tried to cover their nakedness with leaves, and they made, they made clothes and stuff. We try to cover our sin. We try to hide our sin. We don't want to deal with it. We want to hide it. Amen? Now, there's some people you don't want to tell your sin to because they're going to tell everybody. But sometimes accountability is a good thing. Adam and Eve didn't want to tell God, but they had to. They had to deal with it, amen? Now, the thing about sin is it's not just an outward thing that people see all the time. I don't know what your sin is. Unless you come to me and told me something that you do or used to do or you have a tr- struggles with, something that you tried to quit and haven't or you have quit and you don't want to go back. And unless, unless you do that, you know, I don't know who all in here is, you know, sinning. I got no idea. Joanna is, but I mean, the rest of you, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. <laughs> she sins every time I say something like that because then she gets, she gets an attitude. She's got thoughts at me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Most of it's cover it up. I had a guy tell me one time, I don't know if this was true or not because he was one of the funniest preachers I ever heard. But he told me one time, said, yeah, I told my wife I wasn't going to sin all day. So I had her lock me in a closet. He said, I wasn't in there 10 minutes before I started sinning because I hated that she locked me in that closet. I hated her for doing it. Couldn't, you know. Yeah. Well, maybe your sin's closeted. I don't know. But the truth is, 
what shall be hidden shall be made manifest. One way or another, we can't hide our sin. We're supposed to deal with it. Sin isn't superficial. It goes deeper. It goes into the soulish desires. Lusting leads to sin. If you don't deal with the soulish desires, the, the, the thoughts and the stuff that, you do, that, that lead to sin, then you're not going to stop sin because you haven't dealt with the issue that, that it comes from, the seeds that are being planted that bring forth the fruit. You have to deal with that stuff in your hinagon, right off the bat, in your heart. You've got to deal with it. You've got to learn to hate it. Now, we can debate whether or not smoking cigarettes is a sin and get into the whole thing about the temple and all that kind of stuff, but, the, but, but I know this, that when I finally quit, I was a three-pack of cools a day guy at one point. Three packs a day. Now, praise God, they work however much. I don't know what they cost nowadays, but I think it's like five bucks a pack or something. I don't know. Well, whatever it is, back then they were around, they were less than a dollar. And, of course, you bought them carton, you got them cheaper. But I didn't just have an addiction to the nicotine. I had an addiction to the menthol, too, because cause I was smoking menthols. And, uh, and I cut back. I got down to a pack a day. And uh, what, what I stopped doing was let them set in the, cig- in the ashtray and burn up, which is that's the only way you can smoke, you know, three packs a day. But I worked as a security guard, and I'd have something lit up, and somebody would be coming through the gate, and I'd have to lay it down. I'd go out, and I'd come back and be that much ash on it, you know. And, uh, but I got down to one. Then I decided, oh, I'm going to quit, and I went down to five cigarettes a day. And I would have one in the morning when I first got up, and every meal I'd have one after. And if I had any left at the end of the day, I'd have one before I went to bed. And, and I thought, boy, this, okay, that, I've weed myself off enough I can quit. The truth was I didn't quit here. And I kept wanting to do it. I was like that guy on TV who said, oh, quitting's easy. I've done it a thousand times. <clears throat> I, uh, but I remembered I finally got to the place I hated it. And when I got to the place I hated it, I stopped it. And that's just what we have to do. It doesn't matter what you're into. It doesn't matter what, you know, what it is that, that's your sin. You've got to learn to hate it. You have to start hating it. Should we hate? Yes, we should. We shouldn't hate people. You can hate the devil if you want to. I don't think God gets mad about that. But, well, I don't know what good it's going to do you to hate the devil. But you're supposed to not like the fruit that the devil would like to produce in your life. And, you know, sin may begin as an outer problem. It's like loose dirt in clothing or something, you know, that can work its way in. But the truth is, it goes deeper. It works itself inwardly. Filth that, not, that isn't dealt with goes into your life, and it gets a stronghold. Now, we're told that we're supposed to avoid evil. Amen. The other day, I was here at the church, and Joanna was getting a call from someone, and uh, it was from her pappy. And she didn't answer it, and I, I think actually she was out of the room, but when she come back, she's like, oh, you know. And I said, oh, you're trying to avoid evil, are you? And she said, you're supposed to abstain from the parents of sin. <laughs> she said that, William. She, and see, you guys need to smack her later because she said that about y'all. Oh, my. I should have given her a whole lesson on, on uh, you know, honor thy mother and father. But I didn't, you know, since I was the one who got it started anyway. Hallelujah. Now, evil spelled backwards is live. Opposite direction from evil, you live. Going towards evil, you don't have the life that you're supposed to have. You ever seen somebody who said they were 60 and they looked like they were 80 because their life of sin had eaten them up? Amen. Not everybody's as handsome as Jason is. Hallelujah. He'd got new glasses so he could make sure he still was. That's what he told me. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we probably have to pray for him later for finding out the truth. Anyway, it says here, the garment defiled by the flesh. The word defiled there, and in the King James, I believe we have spotted, 
don't we? Anybody got old King James? Does it say spotted by the flesh? Well, you probably don't have your Bibles out because we put it up on the board now. But anyway, I believe it does. It's the word spilos. It means to stain, defile, or contaminate. We should deal with it before it gets to a serious condition. Amen? Now, my wife has taught me, and I don't know what it is. I think as you get older, my mouth's not as big as it used to be maybe. Something. (laughs) But I, I miss my mouth more than I used to. And it seems to fall on me. Now, I've got a little less there to catch it right now. So it's somewhat probably getting on my pants. But uh, if I get a stain on something, when I get home and I take that thing off, the first thing I do is I hit it with Dawn dish liquid and I scrub it real good before it ever gets in the wash. Because you put it in the wash and you don't do that first, then it's going to still have a stain on it. I mean, what I'm talking about, you ladies know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I should just carry Dawn with me every time I go to the restaurant. But anyway, and I hate wasting food. I really do. Yeah, I hate missing it, missing it, unless it's pasta. But anyway, deal with it immediately. Deal with it before you go to bed. Don't try to cleanse yourselves up and not deal with the sin. Take the morning star, the dawn star, and hit it. Hit that sin. Hit that stain. Clean that thing up. Get yourself right. Now, how do we deal with this? So we're going to give you a couple of ideas and thoughts on how we can actually deal with this. The first one is in Romans chapter 12, verse number 9. It says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Abhor is another word for hate. Amen? We're supposed to hate it, hate the evil, and cling to the good. So the first thing you need to think about, besides just hating the evil that we've already said, you need to hang on to what's good. You need to cling to the things that's good. What did Jesus? What did Paul tell us to think on? The things which are above, the things that are of a good report, the things that are, that are helpful and healthy and all those kind of things. We're not supposed to be sitting around thinking about evil. You know, every so often we have some, somebody goes off and shoots a bunch of people. They didn't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to shoot a bunch of people. They masked guns. They thought about it for I don't know how long. They, you know, it's not, it's not a, a one-time thing. It's something that they didn't deal with early in this thought process, and that's what we have to do. But we cling to the good, hold to the good, hang on to the good. Let the good Keep you where you're supposed to be. Hang on to Jesus. Amen? Hang on to the Lord. Let this relationship not be afar off like Dean was talking about. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5 says this. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Love doesn't even think evil. Think about that. If we really love the Lord, we won't sit around and think evil stuff. We have to think good stuff. We have to think the things that God wants us to think. We have to think on the good things and let go of stinking thinking. Now, First Thessalonians chapter, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-one and uh, twenty-two says, "Test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil." There's no form of evil that we're supposed to hold on to. We're supposed to cling. We're supposed to hold on to the good. We're supposed to hold fast to the good. But you don't hold fast. You don't hold on at all. You don't kind of just barely hang on to a little bit of sin so you can feel human. Whatever your excuse is. People have a lot of dumb reasons for sin, amen? They, they have to justify it, especially if they're Christians and they know that it's wrong. So you have to come up with something. Well, you know, if they had done this, I'd have never done that. Well, if I, you know, uh, nobody's going to miss it if I steal that and take that. Well, that doesn't even, 
you know, nobody's even using it, you know, and you come up with all kinds of, of dumb excuses. Well, a dumb excuse is a dumb thought that leads you to sin. So we have to love. We love that stuff that's good. We hold to the stuff that's good. Love doesn't even think evil. The next thing we do is in Romans thirteen twenty one. It says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Think about it. Evil can't overcome you. You capitulate. You give in. You... Let it wear you down because you didn't deal with it. Anybody been there? Yeah, don't say it too loud. People might know you sinned. We all know you did anyway. Your spouse told us. Hey, hey, hey. Well, all right. Somebody did. No, we, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. That's what it says. But if we sin and we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Revelation 1, nine. We no, it's First John one nine. Yeah. Hate the defilement. Hate the stain of sin. Hate. It's a strong word, but it's something that we have to do. We need to love. We need to think in loving things. We need to hold fast to what is good. We need to let good overcome evil. Because if we hang on to the good, the good overcomes. We don't give in to the evil. Amos 5, 4 says, hate evil and love good. Think about that. I didn't have that scripture, so. Amos 5, 4, hate evil and love good. We've got to hate it. Now, in Acts ten thirty eight, it says this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I find it interesting that the devil is just evil with a D. Amen. Jesus hated evil. He hated seeing people bound by evil, by the power of the devil. And he set them free. Oppression can be a lot of different things, but uh, the people who are oppressed can be healed. You can be healed today if you deal with oppression. The power of evil to try to get you to sin is a form of oppression. It's the enemy trying to press you into doing the wrong things. But you can be free from that. You can be set free. By God's power. Jesus was anointed. Amen. How many know that we've been anointed? We've been given the name above every name. We've been given the word of God, which is anointed and powerful. We've been giving, according to Jude 20, read this one again. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Verse 21, that's where you have to live in the love of God, clinging to the good, hating the defilement, the contamination, the stain of sin, praying the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not going to do an altar call where all you sinners come down here because I ain't got that much time. I got a board meeting today. Besides, if I prayed for all your sins, it took that long. My gosh. Now, you know I'm joking, but at the same time, there are people in this room who are dealing with things, and you know you are. You're dealing with, with some sort of sin. Maybe it's just in the thought stage, and you're not actually acting on anything. But you know there's things that you need to cast down, things you need to deal with, well, we'll do that today. First, everybody bow your, bow your head. Close your eyes. This isn't an altar call for salvation. I believe everybody here is saved. 
This is for you to tell God, I'm going to deal with my bad thoughts. I'm going to deal with my sin. I'm going to deal with whatever I've been dealing with. If you're willing to do that and you're ready to do that, just stick your hand up real quick and put it back down so nobody see it. Yes, 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 yes. Hands up all over, flying up all over. Yes, yes, yes. I wish we could get hands go up that much when we're asking for volunteers. But anyway. We're going to pray together. Whether you raised your hand or not, you might as well pray this. Unless you don't want to deal with sin. Say, so, Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus died on the cross for me. He has come to set the captives free. And I ask today that I might be free from sin. Anything in my life that is sin set me free. Every thought, every intent of my heart, every action, every stronghold, any besetting sins, anything that keeps me from living for God, set me free. Heal me today. Deliver me today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember when I was a young guy, I went by a church and I saw their sign. It said, sinners, welcome here. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Let sinners go to that church? I, uh, I didn't realize they was talking about their own people. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Now, the question is, do we hate sin enough in our own lives to also hate it in others or hate to see what the devil's doing to them like Jesus saw and want to see other people set free? Do we have a strong enough aversion to it that we will speak if we need to or love if we need to? Having compassion or save them with fear about the possibility of hell or whatever it may be. Because, you know, the gospel, the good news isn't for people who are already saved. It's for people who need it. Amen. And there are people out there like Lita talked about. They're good people, but they don't know Jesus. They do good things. And sometimes we as Christians don't. He who knows to do good and does it not, it is sin. Now, our scripture tells us all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. We don't do anything in and of our own power, of our own right standing with God, because our right standing is only right because of Jesus. And when we hang on to him and we stay in the right place, we ought to be able to see people set free. Let me say amen to that. Jason's wanting to take up another offering. Oh, I thought you. I thought that was your wallet, brother. I didn't know. I was, it ain't that big. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the people who are here today, and I thank you that you minister to them. Anyone who might hear this message through YouTube or some other method, I thank you that we will hate evil even as we've prayed. But I thank you even more so that we'll love you. Because if we stay in love with you, hating evil is easy. And I thank you. Increase our love. And we give you the praise for it. Be with the people today that they might see the people around them that you love and that need you. And we praise you and give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen.